Hey, what's going on, guys? Uh, this is one that I know some of you guys have been waiting to see. This is the Asura Nine Tails kits. Now, among the different uh, Frame Arms Girl Megami device kits here in the queue behind me to be reviewed, this is the one that I think I see come up in the comments most often. So let's go ahead and take a look at the Nine Tails kit here. So I know some of you guys have been waiting to see this kit, and of course I am too. Love me some Megami device kits, and this is a very big one too. It's a very big box. It's not quite as big like I think uh, the Griefen kit here and the uh, Zelfacar ST kit. Over over there maybe slightly taller but still a pretty big box for a Megami device uh, frame arms girl type kits a little bit bigger than usual so we got a lot of stuff in here obviously as you might imagine and we got some really cool box art as always so there's gonna be a lot of runners to go through so let's just get right into checking out this beautiful box art so as always the box art here illustrated by Nitty 2D and this is basically a variant of the Asura Ninja kit which was a fantastic kit. Both of the Asura kits are very nice, the Ninja and the Archer, I like them both. This one has a lot more stuff going on there, obviously as you can see it has this cool uh, wolf style mask there as well. Fox, I guess actually. Nine-tailed fox, right? I guess that's the thing. On our little blurb here on the front of the box art, I always like checking these out. It says, a Megami device unit based off the Japanese nine-tailed fox and comes with a ver large variety of weapons to become a master of all fighting styles. Customize your Asura nine-tails for combat with its multitude of optional parts and additional weapons. This Megami device was based off of Asura Ninja and is rumored to be the test unit successor to Asura. All right, well, fair enough. Yeah, and as usual with a lot of the other Megami device kits, we have this really cool effect here on the front where the illustration is in gloss and then the black background is in just a matte finish. So you get a really nice effect there for the box art. It looks very premium and here on the side of the box as well too. And these kits aren't too cheap either, so having a nice premium stuff, premium feeling box uh, does certainly help to ease the pain caused to the wallet by a kit like this. But on the side of the box here, I guess this would be the bottom of the box actually, you got some different poses here showing the different optional parts that you get, all kinds of different sword weapons and spear weapons and everything. Of course you can pose the kit without all of that stuff on there. We have some face options as well too. There's the fox mask on the face you can do that you can just display all those bits all splayed out like they're looking like a peacock really more than a nine-tailed fox but still very impressive and here's a look at what the kit looks like just snap built straight out of the box as we'll see it as that's all i'm going to be doing with this kit today but i gotta say without all the decals and details all painted and everything it's certainly looking much less impressive just straight out of the box. It still looks great, but not quite like that. Anyway, going around here to the other side of the box, not too much here except it's showing off the face options. You got a couple of different face options there. A normal face, this uh, black eyes, uh, looks like, I don't know exactly what that is anyway. Sort of demon form face is looking like. And then it has the covered face with uh, terrified eyes, I wanna say. We get a whole bunch of water slide decals included with this as well too, which is cool. And the list price for this at uh, 7,600 yen, so around 75, 80 dollars for this kit. Like I said, it's gonna be certainly expensive, but as you can see, it's in a good size box, so it's about what I would expect for a kit like this. Now in here we've got, uh, let's just uh, prepare ourselves here, guys. That's 27 bags, plus our couple of bags of face and pre-painted parts here, which we'll take a look at in a moment. And then we have our instruction manual and decals. And now I mentioned the box art giving this a little bit more of a premium feel, but it, that's not all. This decal sheet and what we got in here actually makes this feel a little bit more premium as well. So aside from just the normal instruction manual here, we have this extra little book here as well too, which is a special thing just all completely about this kit with some information and photographs in here. Let's take a look at this first. So you just got a nice big painted build here on the front of there and then on the back just the logo and the Asura Ninetales name. Open this up and you got some cool Japanese text there and a nice photograph here of the kit in very Japanese fashion with all the cherry blossoms and everything in there lit up at night in the background. On to the next page. This is just about the development of the kit here, I guess, with the Nitty 2D or development of the design. So here is uh, with the Asura Ninja kit and some MSG parts, just kind of, I guess, planning that out. And then over here, aside from just all this interview here, which is all just in Japanese, you have some, I guess, uh, coloring sketches over here. So testing out the different plans for the color scheme. And ultimately, this is what we got, of course, here. But some of these other designs also do seem kind of cool. 
Then this section over here about the design of the decal. So a little bit kind of behind the scenes information and photographs here that show about the planning of the kit. That's pretty interesting. The interview continues onto the next page. And you have some more of these kind of behind the scenes work in progress photos on development of the kit. Down here, these are development of the face. So developing the different face options for this. I guess maybe these are some of the options that they were playing around with. So you can see kind of how those were detailed out. Then over here, I guess just uh, testing it out with some other stuff. There you got some photographs of that. I guess testing out like different modes for the, how the equipment is gonna work there, it looks like. So next page, we got some more nice, big, beautiful shots of the painted sample build. I wonder if who this is painted by. I'm not sure, but what is great about this is this is really, really great for posing options. So with these kits, and especially when you have so much stuff going on on these kits, all these different parts and everything like that, it might be kind of hard to figure out exactly how you want to pose this. And so having all these sample images is great for ideas for how to pose everything, how you might want to line everything up to get it posed so nicely as they've displayed here in this book as well too. So there's with those kind of dark demon eyes installed there, some of the different modes, how you can display this uh, with all those different parts moved in all sorts of different ways. There are some really nice photographs. There's the terrified face there as well. And that, I mean, as far as the face options go for this, they're all right. I'm not super excited about them, uh, but they're pretty good, I guess. They're unique. Some photographs here of the unarmored form. So you can see some different posing options uh, and some details about that. And then with the kind of using all the equipment as like a separate kind of flyer thing there that she can ride on. So that's kind of interesting. Something else you can do with this as well there too. So always nice to have options. And then another photograph outside, but this time during the day. And so you can see how that's gonna look. It does look very cool. Bunch more information here at the end, and that's it. So that was great. That was really cool they included that. Let's check, go ahead and just check out the regular standard uh, manual here. We do have some more photographs, just with this being just kind of your standard type of manual here. So you just got some more examples. The giant bunny ears is kind of interesting there for that. This looks sort of like a deep striker looking mode over here. Uh, and then we got our parts list. So you can see we're going to have a few leftover parts, a little gray sections as parts that are not going to be used for this. So we'll have a handful of those, but you'll have a lot more parts that are going to be left over aside from that. They're just going to be like option parts, I think, basically. So you'll have parts that are completely useless and then a lot of more parts that are just left aside that you'll just not necessarily use. They're not useless, but you can't use all of them at once, right? So like here, you've got options just for however you might want to build the head here looks like A, B, and C options for the hair it looks like there. So this is going to be a very lengthy review I think because there'll be a lot of options to go over with you guys. I won't be able to show you everything in the review but I'll try to show you enough so you get the idea but there's going to be a lot a lot of options with this kit. Here at the back we have the color and decal guide where all the decals are going to be placed around that as well as just the colors for that are listed up here. Relatively short list of colors basically purple, white, flesh tone, pink, and gold. That's basically going to be about it. So where all the decals are going to be placed around on the kit you can get a sense of that here on these last back couple pages and this beautiful decal sheet here. Let me just give you guys a really nice close-up look at this because you got some gold decals which look fantastic. Those gold ones look really, really nice. And then the red ones, of course, as well too. You got the IE decals down here if you want to use those. So like, for example, if the pre-molded, pre-painted face is looking straight, but you preferred that looking left or looking right, you have options there. You could change those out if you wanted to. But beautiful decal sheet for this. Aside from it just being a very large decal sheet, they look really, really nice. The color, the gold and the red, especially just look fantastic for those. So really keen to get those on the kit. Now here are our face parts there. Once again, the painting on these looks fantastic. The quality of these pre-painted faces from Kotobukiya, as always, just top, top quality. Fantastic looking faces there. And a couple of pre-painted parts here, it looks like for the pants, you got some pre-painted purple on a white piece there and some pre-painted purple on the part of the back part of that basically. And then here is our mask piece. So you got some pre-painted red on this white piece here for the mask as well too. Moving on, we got a bunch of polycaps here. PC1 in this kind of weird brownish kind of color. We've also got PC3, two of them also here in the same color. We have got two hand trees, one in purple and one in white. These are gonna be a little bit different though. Here on the purple runner, we've got open resting hands, trigger finger extended holding hands, regular holding hands, closed fists, and open expressive hands. Now all these have a ball joint molded onto the base of them. Here on our white runner, We've got open resting hands, regular holding hands, open expressive hands, closed fists, holding hands with the trigger finger extended. Those are all hands that don't have the wrist joint molded together on them. 
for the holding hands with the trigger finger extended and holding hands here, we've got an actual wrist joint molded together with those. Now those are the regular kind of wrist joint, just peg style hands there. Burner A is going to be a bunch of parts here in white. Runner B is going to be some of our skin tone parts here. That'll be continued onto runner C as well, and also onto runner D for the rest of our skin tone parts. Runner E is some of the larger white armor parts here. We've got two of these. But then we've got a different runner E, this one also in white, though these are for some of the joints, as you can see, wrist joints and knee joints, stuff like that. Here we got two of those, and some more white parts here on runner F as well. We've also got another runner F, this one be our clear runner for the base stand, which you can see is in that also very cool two-tone finish of matte and gloss. So you just have that standard kind of plasticky gloss there for the logo and the rest of it has this matte finish to it, very nice. Runner G, we've got a few parts here in molded gold. Runner H is a couple parts here in a really nice purple color. Same thing here for runner I as well. And runner J also, we've got two of this J runner. But then we've got another J runner with some white parts here for the legs, we've got two of those. Runner K, some more white parts if you can believe it. And runner L, some more white parts, we've got two of those. Runner M here in clear red is going to be our blade parts for the blade effects. We've got this runner M, and then we've got this runner M, which we've got two of, which is some more blade effect parts here in clear red. We've got two of this same runner. And then we've got runner N for a few more parts here in white. Also, runner N1 for our hair parts in this very light pink color. Runner O is a few more parts here in flesh tone. But runner 01 is a few more parts here in white. Runner P, some more parts here in purple. And runner P1, some more parts in white. Runner Q is some more parts in molded gold, and we've got four of this Q runner. And we also have runner Q1 here for one more skin tone part. Runner R is some more pieces in molded gold. And runner R1 is some more pieces in purple. Runner S, also some more pieces in purple, and we've got two of this S runner. We've also got runner S1 for some more pieces here in gold. Runner T is some more pieces in white, we've got two of this T runner. And we've also got runner T1 for a couple little pieces here in purple. Runner U is some more pieces in gold, we've got two of this U runner. Runner U1 is some more pieces in white, we've got two of those as well. And finally, last but not least, runner Z is also in white for some more joint parts. Uh, so in case any of you guys lost count in there, if you count up all the runners, including the poly caps and these hand parts runners, you've got a total of 53 runners in this box. That is quite a lot. And I just noticed one other thing too here. I went back and checked in the manual. And as I mentioned before, these parts when they're grayed out like that means that they're not used with this kit. But on this little Q1 runner here, this one single little piece, it's grayed out as in you're not supposed to use this part, but it's the only single part on this one tiny runner. So a little bit confused by that, but I'll find out once I get to building the kit, which I'm going to start right now. And it's certainly gonna take a little while because as we know here, there's quite a lot to build. And here it's going to take a long time, but I'll work on that and be right back with showing you guys how it's going to look when it's all put together. All right, here she is in the first form. We'll take a look at here is the nine tails form, and then we'll take a look at the skirt form and also the cloak form as well too here in a moment. But building up the kit, I mean, the construction of the main body is pretty much what you'd expect. The construction of the accessories, all that stuff out the back, all that equipment actually goes together pretty solidly. Other Megami device kits that I built, the equipment sometimes is, is where it kind of be kind of loosey goosey a little bit here and there, but these all seem to be pretty solid. It's pretty big connections on everything. So having to move around that equipment a bunch to swap between forms shouldn't be too much of an issue. There are a couple of loose pieces on the main body itself, I'll point those out here in a minute, but otherwise it's a fun kit to build. Definitely could use all the def decorations of the decals and some panel lining and just kind of the full painting, it's going to look a lot better straight out of the box, so it does look pretty impressive. I think the main thing with this kit is just going to be all the stuff you have included, all the options and accessories and things you have which we'll go through now, and it's going to take a little while, so let's get right to it. Right, so all the hand options, the face option parts, we've already seen those. Uh, we'll see those in use as we go through different poses and stuff. I'll swap those out periodically as we need. As for all this equipment here on the back, like it's made up of a bunch of different sections and you'll need to use some of those or not use some of those depending on which form you go with. So for the nine tails form, this is the set of equipment that you have. We have a bunch of equipment here. I have all the other accessories and stuff in this box, which is going to have lots of other stuff that you'll have. On the sides of her arms too, you have these like blade parts, which can fold forward, but that's gonna be the first loose part you're gonna notice 
is that this connection here to the side of the wrist. And I've had the same thing on the other Arsa kits that use these same parts here. I'll be on the Archer, right? They have these same parts on the side of the arm. But all you really need is just a little bit of glue to hold this piece onto there. But like I was saying, you can fold that knife part there on the forearm forward like that. You can, you can also rotate this the other way around. I kind of prefer it the other way rather than how you're supposed to have it. But either way, it does seem kind of awkward no matter which way you have it. So I'm not really super big into this actual weapon that she's got on the arm there. The other loose point is the part on the hair. And if you try moving the hair, it's just going to break off this white part there on the top of the head that the hair is actually connected into. So once again, I would say just, unless you want to glue this part, but if you don't want to glue this part, move the hair how you want it, then put this part back on the head like that so that's just not popping off on you while you're trying to move that hair. These scarf bits here connected onto the back of the neck are a little bit loose but not too bad. Those can also move. But just because this kit has so much stuff going on I find it's kind of hard to reach some of these sections or hard to move some of this stuff around once you have everything connected on there. So there's, there's so much stuff going on. Well you can move those scarf bits out around there separately to however you might want to pose those as well. But otherwise most of the arms and legs are going to be the same as the Asra Archer. The skirt part is a little bit different here I believe. You have these kind of side skirt parts there which don't move or anything. Those are just uh, hard fixed on there. They have a seam line down the middle of them as well. As you might expect with kits like this they tend to have plenty of seam lines on there. But let's just go through some of the other accessories here. Here's our main weapon, which looks pretty cool from this side, but then from the other side, not quite so much with it just kind of looking like it's just a bunch of stuff stuck on there, which because that's basically what it is. So it's an all right weapon, I think looks pretty cool, but again, it's just made up of different pieces. So you can actually sort of customize this a bit, if you take that piece off. These would be the familiar pieces uh, from the Asura kit, and those can be removed and held as individual little knives that you can hold onto there with the clear part or you can paint the handle if you want and those can be plugged onto the body as is or they can be in these parts here and then plugged onto the body like that or we're just going to have them here on this weapon also this sword blade is also a separate piece that you can use on its own you just need a handle for that and you've actually got four of these little handles that you can use uh, for all sorts of different stuff if you need but that plugs onto there and then you can make that just a sword there like that on its own also, just on the note of connection pieces, you've got a bunch of these leftover connection pieces that you can use for different stuff. These male to male ones are also this male to female ones like that. On the U runner as well, you've got a bunch of these, all these connection pieces you can use that are all leftover, not used for this. You've got a whole bunch of these, also some more connection pieces there. So a bunch of bunch of those. And then speaking of other different handle bits, you've got this connection piece, which is for uh, the sword from the Asura Ninja kit or the Asura Archer kit, I don't remember exactly. I think it's the Asura Ninja kit that uses that sword. And so you can use this as a different handle for that. So this will plug onto the sword and you can use these connection pieces to have a new different handle for that. You also got these handle bits here like this, which you can use these just as like little tiny little kind of pistols or something, I guess, just on their own. Or they're actually meant to be for these clear parts. They kind of knocked off her uh, hair piece there. These little clear blades that we have, uh, six of them around there on her equipment there. If you pull off one of those, you can use that as just this little kind of uh, handheld knife blade kind of thing here if I could hold it. Yes, so lots of different handle pieces and connection pieces that you can use to customize these or make the weapons however you might want to. But just getting back to the main weapon here, the other thing is just that this main handle part can move. You can turn that around. You can also just remove that. That's just on a peg there so you can see how you might want to customize that as well too if you want to plug this onto something or use this handle for something else. It's just got a female end there at the end of there like that. Also kind of among some of your leftover pieces, you have the piece for the bow which you could put there on her back or something like that. You have this kind of like throwing star weapon accessory kind of thing that's made up of a couple of pieces so you could also use that for something else or added accessory or something like that if you wanted to those just fit together on this piece like that and can be plugged onto the body or handheld and you also have this kind of shorter sword weapon here that you can use as well so this one also can just be plugged there onto the body or handheld however you might want to use that and then we have these bits as well too which we'll use for later forms but for now we're not using them but these are just uh, extras if you're going to have this in nine tails form or i guess you could plug these onto the leg or something like that if you want of course this is just following the instructions these are not technically meant to be used for the nine tails form but those are some pretty cool accessories there they seem slightly different i believe from the original ones that came with the astro ninja i believe 
And also just on another note about the leftover parts, you have a good handful of leftover parts, but among them is like kind of the full torso, minus the couple of connection pieces in there that you would need. But I mean, instead of using the connection pieces that are supposed to be for there, I mean, you could just use a uh, wire rod or something like that to plug these together, just use a little bit of putty and just stick them together, basically making a new torso. Because we do also have a whole bunch of the parts for in her unarmored state, right? You have a different piece there for the chest, which you could use for this chest. I mean, you could swap that out whenever you want, but different piece there for the chest, as well as another different piece there for the chest, which is in purple with a skin tone part set in there as well. And a flesh tone piece for the center of her torso there for her belly, as well as the unarmored arms and the unarmored legs as well. Just the kind of just plain white arms and legs there without any armor on those. And some more of these kind of like thruster bits. So two of these longer sized ones that go on the back or on the different equipment. And then four of these smaller type ones, which are like this. So you can do a lot with these if you wanted to just use these for something else. But again, these are used for different forms of this, but you have lots, kind of whatever form you choose, you're gonna have extras of these kind of like thruster unit bits that are on the back there. And one other thing for the unarmored form meant to be set aside is basically a whole other head. Basically, all you only have one set of like the hair for the top of the head and the front of the head, but you have a whole other set here for like the back half of the head, as well as optional parts. So in case you didn't want the long kind of ponytail out the back, you can remove those pieces and swap them out for these two separate pieces here on there like that for different hair options. And then we've got some different neck options here as well. For the ball joint and the neck, if you wanted to use a frame arms girl head or one of, I believe is for a Figma head, if you wanted to use a different uh, head with this, swapping those out, you have these different size ball joints that are meant to be used for those. So just make sure you hang on to those in case you wanted to customize this by giving it a head of a different kit or something. And then of course there's the mask. So if you wanted to have this plugged onto the side of the head, you'll use one of the holes here. You need to use that. And you have this connection piece here on the back of there. You just plug that on and then that will be connected onto the side of the head if you prefer, but if you want to plug this onto the front of the face, basically you need to remove these little bits here on the side of her hair. That is where the mask is supposed to plug on there in the place of those bits. There you go, like that, which is kind of cool. I mean, it's a cool accessory to have. I don't really like it on the face because you, I prefer to have the face displayed, so I guess put in the hand or on the side of the head would be ideal for me, but let's go ahead and just try some poses here with this, shall we? So I'm just gonna go ahead and then just wrap up the video by just showing you a whole bunch of poses with this uh, in the Ninetales mode, the skirt mode, and the cloak mode, as well as the unarmored form here. So you'll see that and just some different poses and things. But again, this is really only gonna be barely scratching the surface of what you can do with this kit. I think that's gonna be, I mean, aside from, if you like the design of it, then that's great. But the other great thing about this kit, why I would highly recommend this to you guys if you are into this type of kit, is that this kit is great for just basically having a really great kit and just a ton of of option parts that you can use so if you like kit bashing these and making custom versions of your Megami device kits and things like that there's so much in this kit to work with and of course that's why you're paying a higher price for this because it's a big box there's a lot of stuff in there uh, whatever you end up doing with this you're going to have a lot of leftover stuff that then you can use for kit bashing with your other kits so if you got a few of them on hand and you want to try some customizing things like that some of these parts of course you can even use with your gunplug kits or whatever as well too like some of those like uh, backpack parts the actual like skirt like nine tails type parts or just like these big angular parts and things that could definitely be used with different uh, frame arms or frame arms girl of course too other gummy device kits or gunpla kits and pretty much anything so there's a lot of stuff to work with with this kit and there's a lot of really cool things that you can do with this and there's a lot of other things cool things that you can use those parts on for other stuff as well too so definitely a highly recommended kit for that reason if nothing else but of course it's just a really cool design as well too the whole nine tails uh, fox aspect trying to make a gummy device like themed after that uh, whole theme. I think it came out pretty well and it does look pretty cool. I think the face options that are included with this kit are pretty good. Sometimes they can be a little bit boring, but uh, these ones are pretty nice. Of course, the pre-painting on them, the actual quality of them is fantastic as always, so that's always good. So once again, I had a good time putting this kit together and playing around with it here for the review for you guys. So uh, until next time, guys, thank you so much for your support, uh, liking the video, commenting, subscribing, all that's greatly appreciated. And of course, a big thank you again to USA Gundam Store as well too for making it all possible, guys. Check out all the different Megami device stuff, 
Codebook stuff in general, Bandai stuff, everything you might be in the market for, you can check it out there on USA Gundam store down below. The link is in the description. You can use my coupon code there as well as Aquarius10. Save yourself 10% off everything in the store as well too. So, all right guys, until next time, I hope you're all having a great day. I'll see you later. Bye-bye.